Mrs. Montgomery here with today's story. Um, I had planned to read a different book today, but yesterday I got some sad news that one of my favorite children's book authors, Tommy DePaola, um, passed away. And he was 83 years old. He lived a nice long life. He passed away at his home in New, Ham um, in New Hampshire. And he just was such a lovely, wonderful man, a great writer, uh, a wonderful illustrator. I know you guys have heard me talk about him a lot in the library. In fact, the last book I read to you guys was um, his St. Patrick's Day book, his book about St. Patrick. Um, and he just, I listened to his stories all the time when I was a little girl and I've been reading them to my kids since they were born. And he was just a really kind, gentle soul. And so today I decided to change my book and read um, one of his classics, which is Streganona. And we've read some of the Streganona um, books in our library. I know you guys liked Streganona's Harvest was a popular one um, in the fall. But today I'm going to read Streganona. And this is actually my book from when I was a little girl. This is the original book with my name in it that my mom um, used to read to me when I was little. So <clears throat> here is Strega Nona by the wonderful Tommy DePaola. In a town in Calabria in Italy, a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Streganona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the convent went, because Streganona did have a magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands, and she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Streganona was getting old, and she needed someone to help her keep her little house and garden, so she put up a sign in the town square. And big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her, and you must fetch the water. For this I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said big Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Streganona, is touch the pasta pot. It's very valuable, and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work, and Streganona met with people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. One evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing, Peeking in the window, he saw Streganona standing over the pasta pot. Look, there's even crayon marks in here from when I was a little girl. I think I didn't take very good care of these books when I was little. She sang... Bubble, bubble, pasta pot, boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Then Streganona sang, enough, enough, pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Streganona called Big Anthony in for supper. 
but too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't see Streganona blow three kisses to the magic pasta pot. And this is what happened. The next day when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly, a pot that cooked all by itself. You'd better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said, such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Some day I will get the pasta pot and make it cook, and then they'll be sorry. That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought, because two days later Streganona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden. Feed the goat and milk her. For your lunch there is bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Streganona, said Big Anthony, but inside he was thinking, my chance has come. As soon as Streganona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Now, let's see if I remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony said, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony. And he ran to town square, jumped on the fountain and shouted, Everyone, everyone get forks and plates and platters and bowls. Pasta for all at Streganona's house. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. Of course, everyone laughed, but they ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Streganona's, the pasta pot was so full, it was beginning to overflow. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. There was more than enough for all of the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two and three helpings, but the pot was never empty. When all had had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down, my pot of clay, until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside, and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to compliments from everyone, he didn't notice the pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Streganona's house, and it was coming out the door. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but pasta kept pouring in. Big Anthony grabbed a cover and put it on the pot and sat on it, but the pasta raised the cover and Big Anthony as well and spilled on the floor of Streganona's house. That's a lot of pasta. yelled Big Anthony, but the pasta did not stop, and if someone hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. 
Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta, and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big a Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses it did no good. By this time the pasta was on its way down the road, and all the people were running to keep ahead of it. Now what would you do if you looked out into the street and you saw all of this pasta coming towards you? I think you would be a little bit surprised, right? We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, stables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. There it comes. Can you see it in the background? It almost looks like mountains. We are lost, said the people, and the priest and the sisters of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town, they cried. And it certainly would have had Streganona not come down the road home from her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what had happened. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses, and with a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, grazie, thank you, thank you, Streganona, the people cried. But then they turned on poor Big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. Now wait, said Streganona, the punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Streganona said. And I want to sleep in my little bed tonight. So start eating. And he did. Poor Big Anthony. And here's the last illustration. There's Streganona in her little house, sleeping in her bed. And look at poor Anthony. I always felt a little sorry for Anthony after that because he would feel so sick. But he did break the rules, didn't he? My favorite um, animals that Taught Me Depala made in a lot of his books were his rabbits and his peacocks. And those, um, he didn't just put those in Streganona, he put them in a lot of his books. And I always liked, even as a child, um, I loved his little rabbits. And I loved his, um, and his peacocks. And there they are on the front cover too. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's story, Streganona by Tommy DePaula. And um, I wanted to share that uh, Tommy DePaola was, of course, once a young man, um, but when he was reading a lot to children, he was older and he had um, kind of graying like hair and a whitish beard um, and mustache that he kept kind of cropped and little, and he wore little um, round glasses when he got older. And I just thought this was neat. Instead of showing you guys a picture of Tommy DePaola, I thought I would show you how Tommy DePaola saw himself. This is a self-portrait of Tommy DePaola. And this is how, um, how Tommy used to make himself. And that's how I will always remember him. Such a great author and illustrator gave us so many beautiful books to treasure for a long time. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's story and I will see you tomorrow with another book.